Hey guys, welcome back to week two of the pajama shorts tutorial. I hope everyone had good success with cutting everything out last week. So at this point, you should have two front pieces and two backs. Remember, you can identify the front from the back by the notches. So the single notches represents the front of the shorts and double notches represent the back. So this week, we're gonna dive into sewing. If you're new to sewing and need help setting up your machine, you'll want to refer to the bobbin winding and how to thread your sewing machine videos. And I'll have those posted um, on both the Facebook group page and also I'll send those in an email um, with the links to both of those. But if you already know how to thread your machine, just go ahead and you'll want to get started with that. So go ahead and get that taken care of. And then after you have your machine set up, you'll jump straight into this first step. So our first step is going to be sewing the ski slopes. And remember the ski slopes are these curved edges. Okay, so we're going to start with sewing those. And what I want you to do first is go ahead and take your two front pieces and lay both of those pretty sides up. Um, with fleece you can identify the front from the back of the fabric because one side is going to be blurry, okay, and then one side is more clear as far as the print on the fabric. So obviously the, the clearer side is the pretty side or the correct side of the fabric. So you want to lay both pieces pretty side up and they should be a mirror image of each other, okay, which simply means if they're looking at each other they're exact opposites. What I want you to do is go ahead and take um, one of the short, uh, short front pieces and flip it over so that it's pretty side down on the other. And what we're going to do is we're going to be lining up these raw edges, okay, along the ski slope. You really don't need to be concerned about what's going on on this side of the shorts. The only thing right now that I want you focused on is this curved edge, or like I said, what I call the ski slope. So when we're pinning our raw edges together, I'm going to try to get this where you can see it, we want to make sure that we bring these edges together so that they're laying evenly. So this is how you want it to look. But if your piece is pinned and it looks like this, there's a gap here, this is incorrect, okay? And your shorts, if you were to leave it this way and be careless about it and just sew it in place like this, your shorts will not fit when it's finished. Um, so you wanna make sure that you bring those raw edges over so that they are matching or laying evenly along the cut edge. So I'm just, I'm just gonna lay that back down here and get my raw edges matched up, okay? And at this point, we're gonna be ready for pinning. Now, think of your straight pins as arrows. Okay, so the end here, it's like it's going to be pointing to the raw edge of your fabric or the cut edge of your fabric. So I want you to pin in the way that's called perpendicular pinning. And I'm just gonna place these so you can kind of see how far apart I would place my pins. But the important thing that I want you to remember is that correct pinning is when you place your pins perpendicular to the edge that you're gonna be sewing, okay? So if I had placed my pins in this direction, that technically could still work but it's just not ideal, okay? And, and with our students, we like to get them into good habits, and the best way to pin is perpendicular to the edge that you're gonna be sewing. The reason for that is when you're sewing, if you have them pinned perpendicular like this, then you can leave them in for a lot longer, and, you, you know, and it's easier also when you remove the pin, you're just pulling it out from the side. If you pin like this, you know, or like this, then you have to pull it out sooner, number one, and also, depending on which way you place the pin, it's really hard sometimes to get it out. So, to avoid all of that frustration, it's just best to pin it just like this. So, what we're going to do is pin through both layers. You want your pins, I don't know, three inches apart or so. Again, keeping an eye on your raw edges, make sure those are matching. Okay, that they're laying evenly, that there's no 
overlap of, of your pieces. Make sure you pin the curve really well because this is probably what's going to give you the most trouble at the machine. So I kind of pin a little bit closer when I'm pinning through a curve or you know place more pins when I'm pinning through the curve. So this is what it should look like. I'll kind of bring it in a little bit closer there. Um, so we have that ski slope pinned for the front pieces. So I'm just going to kind of fold that up gently and lay it to the side and then bring over the backs. So again, we want to make sure that we're dealing with both back pieces. And remember the way that we identify that is with our notches. We should have double notches on both of these and we do. So we know that these are both back pieces. We also want to make sure that we're laying our fabric pretty side up. So just to kind of reinforce that, the wrong side on fleece is the blurry side. The more clear side is going to be the right side of the fabric. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but you just want to make sure that you're consistent. Whatever side you choose to be the pretty side of your fabric, that you're consistent all the way through your project with that. All right, so we're, we have both of the back pieces laying pretty side up. And what we're going to do is go ahead and lay, flip one of these over, okay? So we're flipping it over so that they are pretty sides together. The pretty sides are looking at each other or facing each other. And again, we're focused only on the ski slope here. We're not worried about lining up or pinning any of these other edges. That's really just not needed at this point. It would be a waste of time to pin anything over here. So don't, don't waste your time doing that. Only focus on the ski slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up these edges. Again, bringing those together. Okay, so again, this is a correctly placed um, edge here. If I had my pieces positioned like this, that is incorrect. I think you can see that, but there's a gap here. So we want to slide those over so that they are laying at the same, laying evenly together, okay? So lay this back down, and then again, we're doing our perpendicular pinning. So our pins are pointing to the edge that we're going to be sewing. I like doing that too because um, when I get to my machine, if, I for, if I've forgotten, well, where was I supposed to sew, my pins will help remind me because they're pointing to the edge that needs to be sewn. So it's really just a win-win when you place your pins like this. And again, as you're pinning through this curve, just, you know, place a couple extra. Make sure it's secure. Okay, so now we have the backs pinned together, okay? And I'm gonna take these pieces over to my machine and I'm gonna be sewing the ski slope. And we're gonna use a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this. So, um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll cut the video and then I'll come back and show you how to get everything set up at your machine. Okay, so um, we're ready to start sewing the ski slope on both our front and back pieces. And I wanted to just take a quick minute um, to show you where I have my settings on my machine. Again, this is the Brother CS6000i that we use at the studio. Uh, so hopefully you have this machine or one very similar to it. If you don't and you need help with getting it set up, just text me. I can um, jump onto Zoom for a few minutes and walk you through it. But basically what we want to do, if we look over here on our little chart, we want to select a straight stitch, okay? And so zero and one, those are both straight stitches. The only difference, if you look really close, there's a little dot here to the left and there's a dot in the center um, for stitch one. That's the needle placement. So zero is having your needle to the far left and then one is having your needle centered. So for this um, step, what I'm going to do is have you set your sewing machine to stitch number one. So what we're gonna do is leave this digit at zero and we're only changing this digit. So we're just gonna um, push the up button here and that moved our needle over. And then this is our stitch length. 
So when you're sewing with fleece, it's a little thicker, it's a good bit thicker than cotton fabric. And um, it's best to go ahead and bump that up a little bit to take this from your standard of 2.5 and go up to like a 3.5. And the reason is that lengthens your stitch. Let me kind of slide back here. <laughs> that lengthens your stitch and makes it, um, helps it pull the fabric through the machine easier, okay? A regular foot should work just fine with this. You really don't need a walking foot for this project, but you could always switch to a walking foot if you know what that is. You could always switch your machine out to that and that would help as well. Um, but these are, this, you know, we're only doing double layer, so it'll be just fine using your standard foot. So, all that to say, the only thing you need to change is your stitch to 0, 1, and then your length to 3.5. Okay, and I'm going to move this down to a medium speed here. So, the other thing you want to go ahead and do is, um, if you have washi tape, washi tape works really good because it's not, you know, it's, it's, um, it's really easy to remove. It doesn't have a ton of sticky or, or glue on it, so it works really well. It, oh, my lighting. Um, but if you don't have washi tape, then you could use like painter's tape or craft tape, like masking tape, that would work as well. But what we want to do is just line up our, um, our tape on this, there's, let me take this off so I can show you. If you look closely here, I'm going to try to zoom in, there is a grid right here on this metal plate. So what we want to do is line up with this line. There's a number two right here at the top of it, but we're going to line up with this line, okay, with our washi tape. So I'm going to try to do that one-handed. Let's see how good I am. Not too bad. But you want to make sure that yours is really straight, okay? So it should be following that line and then extending on down something like that. So you may wonder, well, why is she using that? And the reason is this is going to be like our sewing guide. Okay. So you could use this plate, but it's such a small amount here that especially for beginners, it's just, it doesn't really help that much. So for my beginners, I like to have this extended out so they'll know how far over to bring their fabric so that they can line up with their tape. Okay. Or I'm sorry, so that they can have an even seam allowance. Cause that's our goal is making sure that we stay, um, an even distance from that raw edge while we're sewing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is try to back up and sew this at the same time. Oh my word, this is challenging. Um, but anyway, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start with the fronts, okay? Remember, the front of your shorts has this single notch, so that's how I know that I'm sewing the fronts. And what I'm gonna do is bring my raw edge over to meet the tape line. So we're gonna slide this over so that it's seated right beside the tape. So I didn't pull it over the tape. I also didn't leave it shy of the tape. I'm pulling it over so that it's touching. Now another thing is when you um, place your fabric under your foot here, you want to start maybe a quarter inch from the top edge of the fabric. You don't want to start right on the very edge because it could chew your fabric and pull it down inside the machine and that's just a nightmare. You have to, you know, get the fabric out of the machine and rethread and everything. So to avoid that, just make sure that you start about a quarter inch from the top edge. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and let you just take a look there at where you need to be lined up. All right, so at this point, we're ready for sewing. So we are going to lower the arm, which is here. We're going to lower that down, and that lowers our presser foot down so that it's standing on our fabric. And we're going to push the foot pedal, okay? Your foot pedal is on the floor, of course. And I want you to go ahead and do a back tack. So remember, a back tack is going to be about three stitches forward. If you go to four, it's okay. And then you're going to push your reverse button for three stitches backwards. So I am going to push and hold this button for three stitches backwards. Maybe one more. Again, you don't want to run off the edge of your fabric when you do that. All right, so here we go. We're going to sew. When we get to a straight pin, we want to stop, okay? So remember, think of your straight pins as arrows when you're pinning and as stop signs when you're sewing. Always make sure your machine stops before you reach in to remove a pin. Okay. 
Also, be careful with your hand placement. Make sure you're keeping your hands far away from the needle. <coughs> Excuse me. As you're sewing, your eyes should be focused in this zone right here. You should be looking in front of your needle. If you're staring at the needle, you're not doing yourself any good. You wanna make sure you're looking ahead of the needle. And that way, if you need to steer left or right, you can do that. Because you wanna make sure to keep that raw edge in line with the tape at all times. If I'm watching the needle, I can't really correct anything or it's, it's really just too late to correct it. So I need to always look ahead of the needle, you know, about an inch in front. All right, so now we're going through the curve and this is a huge challenge, especially for beginners. But again, with this portion, what I usually do is look directly beside my presser foot here, and I try to make sure that I have an even amount of fabric um, sitting right beside the foot there as I go through the curve. So what I'm doing is twisting my fabric as I sew. I'm just giving it a little twist, not a big twist, just slowly twist it out, slowly twist. Okay, and I can see how I have that same amount of fabric here and I'm in line with my tape right through there. I'm gonna pull this pin out and then I'm gonna sew on through the curve. And again, I was just twisting that fabric in this direction, okay? So just very slowly twisting. All right, we're getting towards the end, and so when we're at the end, we wanna lock stitch or back tack again. So I'm gonna go in a little closer. You can see where I stopped there. You don't wanna stop on the very edge of the fabric. You wanna stop just, just before that, and then you're going to push your uh, reverse button here and hold it down for three stitches. So one, two, three, and then sew again to the edge. One, two, three. All right, so we are finished. And what we're gonna do now is lift our presser foot by lifting the arm here. And then we're going to lift the needle because the needle's still down at this point. We need to get the needle up. So you have two options. You can push this button. If you don't have a button like that on your machine, then you're going to go over here to the hand wheel and just twist it, turn it towards you so that the needle raises up. And then we can pull our fabric away. So I'm gonna pull that to the back side of the machine here. Sorry about that, I had to switch hands. So I'm gonna pull this away. And what I want you to do, there's a little clip here on the side of your machine. So I want you to just take those threads and pull that from, the, from behind that clip towards the front and then just pull down to cut those. All right, and then now what we're gonna do is work with the back of the shorts. All right, so we're gonna take this, we can identify the back of the shorts again with the notch here, and we're ready to sew these. So I'm gonna pull this over so it's even with my tape line, and I'm gonna lower the foot by lowering the arm here. I'm gonna lower the needle, I'm going to start with the back tack or the lock stitch. All right, so I'm going to sew three stitches forward and then press and hold my reverse button for three stitches backwards. And now I'm ready to sew. Take that pin out. All right, and my eyes are focused in this zone right here, making sure that the raw edge of the fabric is in line with the tape. Now girls, you can see that my hands are not this close to my presser foot. What's gonna happen if I have my fingers this close? There's a chance I'm gonna sew my fingers, so make sure you keep your hands far away from the needle, okay? Just be really careful. All right, when we get to another pin, we just take that out. And again, as we get closer to this curved edge 
instead of looking at our, um, instead of looking in front of our needle, whoops, sorry. <laughs> instead of looking in front of our needle, we're gonna be looking beside it, okay? Because we have to do that when we go through a curve. So we're gonna um, keep our eyes focused there right beside the presser foot, trying to keep that fabric even with the tape. And again, just twisting the fabric, okay? Twisting the fabric as we sew through this curve. Now remember, when you're sewing, you don't have to push fabric through the machine. It should do the work for you. You are driving the machine and you are steering your fabric. So you shouldn't have to push it or pull it through. You're just guiding it. Steering the fabric. All right, so again, we're at the end and we're ready for back tack. Now, one thing I wanna show you, cause I don't want anybody panicking if this happens to you, but probably because I was only sewing with one hand and I wasn't able to really keep a good grip on my fabric, but do you see how these two layers are a little uneven? So that's okay. If it's just slightly uneven here, don't panic. If it's more than a quarter inch, then we may need to take some stitches out. But this is, um, it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but it's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm not gonna worry about this uneven edge and I'll show you how to straighten that up or correct that in just a minute. But, um, but just wanted to let you know that in case that happens to you. All right, and then we're ready to do that back tack. So you're just pushing your reverse button, hold it down for three or four stitches. And then again, just sew back to the edge. All right, and then you're ready to lift your presser foot and lift the needle by turning the hand wheel towards you. And then that should release the pressure on your fabric. You should be able to pull it. If for some reason it feels like it's still caught, try turning the wheel just a little bit more towards you. Okay. So now we're just gonna clip our threads. Always clip your threads here on the side of the machine first, and then you can follow up with a small pair of scissors to clean up these little tails. Um, but anyway, as long as you clip them here on the machine, it leaves these threads the correct length so your machine doesn't come unthreaded. All right, so that is how to sew both of the ski slopes. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video and then we'll jump back in on the next step. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and move into the next step. At this point, you should have both of the ski slopes sewn together, okay, for the front and the back. And what I want you to do next is go ahead and take the front of the shorts and lay those so that they are pretty side up. So I'm gonna open them just like this. They're pretty side up. You can kind of see how they're starting to take shape. This is the top of the shorts. These are the sides of the shorts. This is the bottom of the shorts where we'll eventually hem. Okay, and you can see how you have one leg here. This will be for another leg. But what we're focused on for this next step are side seams. So we're gonna be working on this edge and that edge. All right, so we have our fronts pretty side up. We're gonna take the back and do just the same by opening them up and we're going to place those pretty side down on top of the front, just like this. Now, you can kind of see how your shorts are a little bit bigger. Your shorts back pieces are a little bit bigger than the front, but that's how they should be, okay? Because we need more fabric to cover the back of our body than we do at the front. So that's why these will be a little bit bigger. So if you try to lay them out flat and smooth, then it will extend past the front of the shorts. So you don't want to do that. What we actually want to do is work on the side seam here, pinning our raw edges together. So again, making sure that those raw edges are placed evenly. And we'll perpendicular pin. So this is the side we're going to be sewing. And that's where our pins will be pointing to. So just pin through both layers. And 
And once you finish this side, we'll move to the other side. Excuse me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna slide this over a little bit just so I can reach it. But well, I want to keep that in the view so you'll have it as a reference. So I'll just have to stretch. <laughs> All right, so again, we're lining up the raw edge along this side. Now, something to keep in mind, you want your top edges to be even, okay? So they're, of course, even here on this side, but we also want it even along the top. Any uneven edges need to be fed down to the bottom of the shorts. to stretch without blocking the camera so it's a little bit challenging there but I'll get it all right and again you, you don't really need to over pin this I would say every like you know three or four inches is sufficient most important thing is that you're keeping your raw edges even okay so at this point I have the left and right side seams pinned and I'm ready to go to the sewing machine. So, Okay, so here we are. We're ready to sew those side seams together. So what I'm gonna do is just start out with this side here. We wanna make sure that we are keeping the raw edge in line with the tape, just like we talked about before, and that we're starting about a quarter inch from that top edge. Our sewing machine should be set to the same settings that it was before. See if I can get that to show up. So that's a 0, 1, and a 3.5. And we have this in place, so we're ready to lower our foot. And we're going to lower the needle and begin sewing. So we'll start out with that lock stitch. Press and hold your back tack button for three stitches. And then we're ready to sew. Again, just remember to stop at those straight pins. You don't want to sew over them. Some seamstresses will sew over them as long as they're placed perpendicular like this. Um, but there's a chance that you could accidentally hit it with the needle and if the needle hits it it will dull your needle and then you have to replace it and all that fun stuff so it's best in my opinion just to remove those and and don't take the chance So I'm just sewing all the way to the edge there. And then we'll lock stitch once more. So again, just press and hold your reverse button for three or four stitches backwards and then sew to the edge. And you'll raise your presser foot and raise your needle. We'll pull that away and clip our threads here on the side. And that side, if we can get it, that side is complete, okay? So now we're gonna flip our shorts over, or I should say flip them around, so that we can do the other side. All right, so we're gonna line up again. And we're ready to sew. We start out with that back tack button. Back tack for three or four stitches. Remember the reason you back tack is so it locks the seam. So there's less chance that it's going to rip or pull apart. And you always want to back tack the beginning and the end. So, you know, when you start sewing a seam, you'll back tack. And then when you're finished sewing that seam, you'll back tack again. Ok, 
Okay, just watch your fingers if you have to get a little closer. And keep guiding it so that it's even with your tape. The reason we want to keep it even with our tape is so that it's an even seam allowance. So that our stitching is an even distance from the raw edge or from the cut edge of our fabric. So again, we're back tacking. Don't forget the back tack. And then we'll raise our presser foot and raise our needle and we'll clip our threads. Okay, so both of those are finished. And what I would suggest doing now is take a few minutes to clip all these thread tails from each end of your fabric. Okay, so we are going to finish up today with the inseam, okay? And what the inseam is, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna give the shorts a, a left and a right leg, okay? So we're gonna be working in this area. And what I want you to do is using your pins I want you to take both of these layers and I want you to bring the seams together. So if you can see this seam here, see if I can line up there. Okay, so I'm going to stack this seam on top of this one. So again, we're going to take this seam and stack it on top of the back seam. Okay, so those are stacked together and I am ready to pin just to anchor that down. Now, once I have my seams stacked, I'm going to pin my raw edges together here and here to the left and right of the center seam. So I want to bring those raw edges together. And pin just like that. And then I'm going to go back to my center and I'm going to pin out this way. Okay, so just to bring it in a little closer here, you can see how the center seam is pinned first. Okay, so both of those are stacked together. And then we have our raw edges even all the way from one side to the other. So we'll jump over to our sewing machine. I'll, sh I'll show you how to sew this and then we'll go from there. Okay, we're back at our machine. Just go ahead and leave your settings where they were, zero, one for your stitch and a 3.5 for your stitch length. We're gonna be working just the same way we did before, bringing our raw edges in to meet our tape. Once you get it in place, you can go ahead and lower your presser foot down. Let's see if I can do this with keeping everything lined up. Okay, all right, so we'll start out with our back tack just to lock our stitch there. So we'll go three stitches forward and press and hold our reverse button for three stitches backwards. Now, as you approach the center seam, I want you to make sure that this is still open and you'll also need to check the under layer to make sure your seam allowance is staying open on that side too. And as you go over this, it's a, it's a lot thicker. So you just want to um, guide it through, making sure that you don't push it. If anything, you would pull from the back of the machine, I mean, from the back of the fabric here to help ease it through but you never want to push it this way because you could accidentally push your fingers through and get caught in the needle there. All right, so I'm going over the seam and I'm gonna lift the foot a little bit just to try to help smooth that fabric out a little. I feel like my glare, let's see if I can get that. All right, so here we go. We're gonna stay in line with our tape and ease over our seam. 
our center seam. My seam allowance is wanting to get out of line there, but I made sure to fix it. Don't forget about those pins, you know, make sure you're pulling those out as you sew. And then you just go all the way to the other end. Keeping those raw edges together. All right, we'll, we'll finish up here with a back tack. And then we'll raise our presser foot and raise our needle. And then we clip our threads. Remember, always clip those on the machine. That keeps your thread tails the right length so that none of this comes unthreaded. And then what I want you to do now is just cut these thread tails off so that your project stays nice and clean. So go ahead and clip those. Okay, so that concludes our lesson for this week. At this point, your shorts should actually look like a pair of shorts. You should have a left and a right leg and your side seam seams should be finished as well as the inseam here. Next week, we will focus on our casing, um, turning down for our casing and getting our elastic secured. So that's kind of gives you a heads up for what to expect next week. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to text me questions. Um, remember, write those down and save those for our Zoom sessions. And we'll go over, you know, any steps that need additional clarity. Um, also, remember to take your, your time sewing. So at this point, you should have watched this video from start to finish. And now you're ready to go back to the beginning, but actually do the steps with me, you know, along with the tutorial. So I want you to just take your time. Uh, remember, in sewing, slower is better, and that way you can avoid mistakes. But other than that, I will look forward to seeing you guys at Zoom this week. It was so much fun last week getting to see everybody. I miss you guys so much. Um, but if you haven't already signed up for your Zoom session, make sure to do that, okay? If I saw you on Zoom, then obviously you're in a class and, and you're set on go. But if I haven't seen you in Zoom or if you haven't received a link from us, and you probably still need to get signed up. So make sure to do that. The link is on the Facebook group page. So your parents can just click on there and then put in what time, um, like what session is, you know, works for your schedule. So anyway, have fun sewing and I will see you guys soon.